Hi everyone, how's it going? I'm DK. I'm Rizzo. And I'm Zero. And today on Anime Reaction Watch, the eighth episode of Drifters. If you want to check out our reaction to the eighth episode of Drifters, hit that link in the description below. And be sure to give us feedback in the comment section because we love hearing from you. And as always, if you like what you see, subscribe to Otaku Saga. And don't forget to like and share our videos. And, and thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. So in this episode of Drifters, uh, we had a lot of um, world building. Yeah, a lot of world building. More world building. Yeah, a lot of uh, characters moving around. Yeah. Lots so you, you get kind of a, it's kind of a cool down episode from the fights because uh, mm -hmm. after the fight in the last episode, uh, this one picks up right where it left off with uh, Nobunaga meeting Abe no Har Haru Akira. Haru Akira. Abe no Seime. Abe no Seime. And they probably it's explain so, it that it's yeah. Abe no Seime, but... Yeah. Yeah. Ba basically, uh, he learns that he was called Abe no Seime, but he doesn't feel that he's deserving of the title, so... He just calls himself that. Yeah. What a humble brand. Anyway, I'm gonna call him Abe no Seime because that's a lot easier for me to say. And it's a lot more commonly used name. Abe no, Abe no Kira. Yeah. Abe no Kira. <laughs> or, uh... What did uh, uh he called Abakira, I think, or uh, no, Haruki, Haruki, or something like that. Uh, I don't know. He, he called him a bunch of things. Nobunaga in this show is definitely a nicknamer. Definitely. Toyo. Damn head hunting ghost. Toyo Toyo. <laughs> Toyo. <laughs> Boobino. <laughs> Boobino. <laughs> Boobino. But um. But yeah, it picks up right where they're they're meeting for the first time. Um, it's revealed that Joan of Arc uh, flees after Toyohisa leaves her in the well. Yeah, so this creates a nice little uh, conflict of interest between Abe no Seimei and uh, Toyohisa. They differ on it. Yeah, they ba differ. basically Toyohisa, you know, follows a code that basically, you know, says that he's not going to take a woman's head in battle. Yeah. Um, whereas Abe no Seimei is... Oh, she's an end. Kill her. Yeah. Doesn't matter if it's a he or she, it's an end. Kill it. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah, don't don't think of it as, as male or female, but as the enemy. So yay, uh, one more disadvantage uh, for our plucky underdog protagonist to overcome. Mm -hmm. Because they're all so, uh, they ha everyone has their own uh, huh, their own ends to meet, their own goals they want to achieve. Unlike the ends, who just want to destroy the world. I think that it's going to be somebody else who takes on uh, Joan of Arc next time. Hmm, okay. Uh, Probably. I'd imagine that Abe is probably going to go as far as he can to make sure that Toyohisa is not the one who faces off with the females anymore. Yeah, because, well, uh, the major ends they've displayed need not only have Joan of Arc still, but you have Anastasia out there as well. Mm -hmm. So, mm. Um, in other news, uh, CPO did not make the trip with the rest of the drifters. Yeah, he fell off the wagon, literally. <laughs> Yeah, l literally, they were being chased. They got hit with fire arrows. He goes to pull one off of the wagon, so that the, probably so that it doesn't explode the ammunition that's on board. Yeah, and uh, they hit a bump and he falls off, and ends up in, in the forest where uh, Kono crash landed his zero and became a uh, king of the dog people. Dog people. I think the kobolds. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, which was an absolutely hilarious scene. So you have you have CPO speaking Latin, and then um, Kono speaking Japanese, and they're both like arguing with each other, but neither of them knows what the other's saying. And then CPO finally gets through to Kono by saying um, Rome, Roma, Roma. Well, which is the same in Latin and Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> it's just funny, like it's showing Excellent. the thought Hilarious. processes from uh, Roma, uh, uh, Roma, Italy. Uh, Roma, Italy. Rome, Italy, Axis. Yeah, hey. and it shows the Italian flag from uh, from circa World War Two. Yeah, and then ah, uh, you know, Nazi flag and Japanese flag and uh, Italy flag. 
Oh, the the Axis the Axis powers. Yeah, ally. Yay! Then he and remembers then he that Italy lost first. It. Yeah, 1944. They're Italy, the first ones to fall. Yeah, Italy got Italy lost and uh, um, surrendered. You, you traitor! Bastard! You, you bastard! traitor! <laughs> Absolutely hilarious scene. I said it uh, in between takes, but it reminds me of the opening scene for either I forget what's the second or the third Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Uh, I think it's the third one. Yeah, but with Johnny Depp as the the, the god slash sacrifice, yeah. the island tribe. It was, it was really funny, um, but I, I liked how that that bit was really really good storytelling because if somebody isn't you know, not necessarily familiar with the character or why he'd be acting a certain way. It's really a good job of, you know, giving the character's motivation mm. of why he turns around and then tries to kick Scipio's ass. <laughs> no word. Tries. Because... That's a... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Scipio is not... They put up a pretty good fight, right? Yeah. But yeah, just that whole that whole exchange is just hilarious. But uh, because 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 uh, Scipio ended up falling off the falling off the bandwagon, um, Hannibal mm -hmm. is now in a dementia state. Yeah, he's definitely there already, even when Scipio's around. But when Scipio's around. Probably because of the long-standing feud between them and, you know, the fact that they know each other, basically. Well, CPO is... It you know, helps. Well, yeah. CPO is, like, Hannibal's uh, sense of purpose, really. Yeah. So... So, uh, But, yeah, Hannibal's, uh... Yeah. Falling into dementia. I, I absolutely love the interaction between uh, Hannibal and Toyohisa. Oh yeah. Because Toyohisa looks upon looks at him and was like, man, you're you know, you really fucked up. And pretty you know, basically. Um, are you really you know, are you really fucked up? And the guy just ra rambles on. Alright, grandpa pulls out his sword, basically, you know gives off killing intent and charges at him. <laughs> and Hannibal just stops him with one twig. That would pierce Toyohisa's right eye. eye before Toyohisa would be able to, yep. to get him. So badass. <sighs> and then continues to ramble on. So. But Toyohisa recognizes that, yeah, he's still, there's still a glimmer left in his eyes. Well, yeah, as Toyohisa put it, he has the same eyes as my uncle. Not to be fucked with. Crazy as hell. Because <laughs> you're crying on a bunch of freaks. <laughs> Speaking of not to be fucked with mm. Nobunaga in this episode like holy shit <laughs> came out spilled like basically all the beans to uh, Abe no Seime and everyone present really yeah and everybody present and uh, he did this obviously after after uh, finding out about gunpowder and the guns well, it, yeah, it, um, it shows him pick up a, a casing, a shell casing, and then he turns and asks them about it, and, well, basically Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid revealed to Nobunaga the technology of... of uh, modern-day firearms. Yeah, modern-day firearms and bullets with casings. Or at least mid-1800s. Well, but, yeah, yeah. But yeah, far pretty, future. Pretty, mar pretty modern. I mean, the the technology hasn't really changed a whole lot since then. Anyway. That's true. I mean, yeah, you still the got machine parts. The bullet hasn't changed. Yeah, no, the lot. cartridge. Yeah, the the actual cartridge hasn't changed much. It's basically, as they said, it's a you know metal casing with gunpowder in it, stoppered by a bullet, and then it has a um, primer. Yeah, in the back. A primer in the back. So. And once the once the hammer comes down, hits hits strikes the primer, it ignites. And boom goes the bullet. Yep. But yeah, it's all feature tech to actually everyone else. Yeah. Because uh, until until they finally meet up with Kono, Butch Cassie and the Sundance, Sundance Kid are from the furthest in the future. That is true from their point of view. So. Yeah. <laughs> And oh my god, I cannot wait until Nobunaga sees the zero. 
I can't wait till he sees the aircraft carrier. Right. I got a feeling they're gonna run into that soon. You, you saw his face looking at the Gatling gun. Actually, I'm pretty sure there was a sound effect that was like, like something straining against something, like. A, yeah, that, that was his heart on. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, and he just sits there and strokes. I, 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 I want I, it. I, I, I want it. <laughs> it. Does the creepy finger wiggle? <laughs> Basically, he reacts exactly how we pictured that he would react. And it was awesome. Glorious. Glorious, glorious. glorious. But, so, Toyohisa decides to go free the dwarves. Mostly, like, I mean, from his point of view, it's, you know, we're going to get a multinational army so that we can go against the ends. That's more Nobunaga's point of view, though. Well, actually, that, that is what Toyohisa said, though. Like, like well, he said that he wants to free the other people, too. Hmm. But what it really comes down to for them is they need the dwarves' crafts, craftsmanship. Yeah. Like, uh, Nobunaga's plan is not going to work unless they have the dwarves as craftsmen. Craftsman. Right. So that's that's why it's so important. And then the elves, you know, bring up the classic, you know, dwarves versus elves uh, feud. And so I tell you, he's a just badass as all fuck, like he is. All right. Just, all right okay. It, I'm. We're going to go free the dwarves. If anybody's coming with me, then come with me. If not, whatever. If not, whatever. See ya. <laughs> just walks out. And of course, the, el the elves from the first village are like, well, he saved our lives, so Fuck we it. should go help him. And also, the reason why the, uh, um, why the Orte uh, Empire was able to take over was because we wouldn't put, a put aside our petty squabbling. Mm -hmm. So, somebody needs to do it. Put on your big boy pants. <laughs> basically and uh, also like now that the elves are basically going to go save the dwarves kind of yeah. so <laughs> that make for some awkward interactions I'm sure yep. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to, to the... don't tell the elf <laughs> <laughs> but um, so Toyohisa basically says oh hey we're gonna go huh. free the dwarves Ave uh, Abin Aseme and Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and also Hannibal. Um, well, Abin Aseme decides to go back to the Octoberists' uh, headquarters. Because yeah, they need to regroup and uh, start to search for CPO. Yeah. And so, um, so they go back, but in the meantime, uh, Butch Cassidy gives Nobunaga a revolver <laughs> and then they also leave the Gatling gun with them because they're out of bullets no, so to them this was a useless yeah it's oh, just iron yeah. yeah so in his hands he could probably take it apart and figure out how it's made and put it back together again yeah. I'm not sure I, exactly how well that will work but I got a feeling we'll find out soon enough yeah also um, they talked about needing a scientist and then uh, what's his name oh yeah San Councilor Germain uh, did the sneeze gag yeah, since they're so, talking about him. I'm sure we'll see that clown guy. Tomokazu <laughs> Sugita. Yeah, I know. Oh my like, god. I, I of was, all the uh, characters. Yeah, I wasn't I, was, I like wasn't really paying attention during that episode uh, to the voice that much. And then I noticed that t uh, Tomokazu Sugita does his voice. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's definitely going outside your typecasting. Right. So this is going to be good. Um, also, something that we did not mention, right at the beginning, we actually got a conversation between Yoichi and uh, Yoshi, uh, Yoshi Tsune. Yoshi Tsune. Mm -hmm. Which I assume is one of her, one of his brothers or something like that. Must one of be. his rivals yeah it's somebody well, said it was a lord actually yeah because he said he's not following his orders anymore so yeah. um i also do want to point out that uh we recently had re had to redo our reaction to episode three so we kind of have a little bit of a little bit of a uh like like we we went back and watched that which is why i i remembered this 
Uh, Yoshitsune was the one that was hanging out by the Black King right. in episode three, so and that's was something like, that's important to note. He he didn't outright say whether he was an end or a drifter. And the Black King's leery of him because of it. Yeah, so. he's just on the side of the ones that he finds most interesting. Yep. His own side. But uh, yeah, it, it really shook Yoichi. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. the bone. There's some there's some past trauma involved for sure. So, yes, so I'm looking forward to more of this. Oh, as always, this is just Drifters awesome. is just like oh my god! If you don't like this anime, like what? Uh, I I almost want to say what's wrong with <laughs> it has everything and it is fucking epic. Pretty much. But let us know what you thought of the anime, what you thought of our reaction in the comment section below. Yep, thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. But that's going to do it for this episode of Anime Reaction. As always, I'm DK. I'm Hero. I'm Rizzo. See, See you next, next time. time. <laughs> I swear to God, I literally did hear a sound that was like... Right? <laughs> kind of like, like, yeah. yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> like something straining against something. Uh, go ahead and click on my face to go to our entire side. I did. Fuck. <laughs> go ahead and click on my face to go to our Otaku Saga Talks. Click on my face to go to Otaku Saga Gaming, our gaming channel. And click on the wife to subscribe to Otaku Saga and check out our new and improved Patreon page.